For hundreds of years after the crucifixion of Christ, Rome persecuted Christians. They nailed them to crosses, set them on fire by the dozen in arenas, whipped them, beat them, humiliated them, and fed them to lions, leopards, bears, and dogs. Thousands upon thousands were killed. Others went into hiding. But the persistence, faith, conviction, and perseverance in reported miracles, Christianity eventually became the state religion of the Western Roman Empire under Emperor Theodosius I in 380. By the early 17th century, Christianity had spread or had begun to spread to almost all corners of the world, including the then isolated and remote islands of Japan. It's estimated that there were about 300,000 Christians in Japan, mostly in the south, in 1635. In 1640, the only Christians left in Japan were hiding their faith, hiding themselves, or both. In 1614, the Japanese government, led by Shogun Tokugawa Hidetada, determined that Christianity was a threat to their rule and the traditional customs and beliefs of Japan. They banned foreign missionaries and forbade the practice of Christianity in the Japanese islands. But that did not stop the growth of the religion. And the religion that promoted the idea of turning the other cheek continued to grow, especially in the south, where it had first arrived with Spanish and Portuguese priests and monks. So, beginning shortly after 1614 and becoming more severe through the 1630s, Iemitsu had the Christians in Japan, both Japanese and non-Japanese alike, killed. Welcome to A Day in History, where we bring you some of the most unusual and darker chapters of human history. In all likelihood, the first Europeans to arrive in Japan were Portuguese sailors who had been blown off course on their way to the Asian mainland in the late 1490s. But the real beginning of European influence in Japan began in 1543, when a succession of Portuguese traders arrived in the country, the most prominent being for now Mendes Pinto, who had sailed to India several times as well as China, the Philippines, and the famous Spice Islands, the Moluccas northeast of Indonesia. He later wrote a detailed book about his voyages in Asia, including Japan. Pinto and the other Portuguese traders sold spices and several arquebuses, an early handheld firearm. The Japanese were intrigued but wary. For centuries, the only people they had had contact with were Koreans, Chinese Okinawans, and others of the Ryukyu Islands, which at the time were a tributary state of China, not Japan. These kingdoms had similar, though different cultures, a shared history going back centuries, and shared to a great degree ideas about religion or spirituality. They also had a similar appearance to one another. The Europeans were utterly different. Their ships were different, their clothing was different, their appearance was radically different. So was the food they ate. Their language was absolutely unrelated to anything the Japanese knew, and their religion and spiritual beliefs were different in the extreme. Pinto and the other Portuguese traders' explorers did not include missionaries or anyone trying to spread Christianity. They didn't even know if they would be allowed to anchor in Japan. They were there to trade, and to evaluate Japan and check out the prospects for trade and influence there. Only two European nations had practical knowledge of the lands and seas of Asia at that point, Portugal and Spain, two closely related allies. Most importantly, they were both Catholic, and the Catholicism of that time was a highly evangelical religion. Where numbers of Portuguese and Spanish traders and military men went, priests and monks went with them. Remember, it took a good six months to make the journey from the Iberian Peninsula to Japan. It could be done in four months, with luck, by going through Magellan's Pass at the southern tip of South America, discovered in 1520 by the famous Portuguese explorer. Only the Spanish and Portuguese knew about the pass until 1587, when the first English ship, the privateer Dolphin, sailed into the Pacific. Going through the pass and across the Pacific was extremely dangerous though, so most sailed around Africa, into the Indian Ocean, Southeast Asia into the China Sea, and beyond, 
staying as close to the coasts as possible. The enemies of Portugal and Spain, the Protestant, English and Dutch, were largely kept out of Asia by the size of the Spanish and Portuguese fleets there. So, it took about a year to get to Japan and back from Portugal. Add in stopovers for trade and resupply along the way, as well as securing financing and finding a crew brave and knowledgeable enough to go, and a return trip could take years. Pinto and others also had to convince their Portuguese and Spanish rulers that the trip was worth it in terms of money, power and religion. At the time, Portugal and Spain were extremely religious, one might say fanatically Catholic, for the Protestant Reformation had begun in 1517 and spread throughout Northern Europe. The Portuguese, Spanish and Italians, and all popes with one exception until 1978 were Italian, saw themselves as defenders of the true faith. They saw it as their duty to spread Christianity in its Catholic form around the world. Francis Xavier, the co-founder of the Jesuit order with Ignatius Loyola, arrived in the southern city of Kagoshima on the island of Kyushu with two other monks in 1549. They received permission from the local daimyo or lord to travel his lands and while there, Xavier learned Japanese and began to convert Christian texts written in Latin to Japanese. He traveled through Kyushu preaching and making converts when he went to the capital Kyoto. In Kyoto, he was told in no uncertain terms not to preach or try to convert any Japanese there. Kyoto was not only the shogunate's capital but also home to the emperor. The emperor was not only treated as a god but was believed to be divine, despite having no real political power. It would not do for a foreign and barbarian religion to be taught in Kyoto. One of the things that Japan is famous for today is its ability to take elements of foreign ideas and inventions and somehow make them uniquely Japanese. It was the same before the arrival of Christianity. Before and for some time after the arrival of the first Europeans, Japan was greatly influenced by China and Chinese culture. Though they are quite distinct today, Japanese language and writing have ancient roots in China. The same is true for religious and spiritual beliefs to a degree. Through the centuries, the Japanese developed their own ideas about the beginning of the universe and the foundation of their island country. Many of these beliefs, along with notions of harmony and personal enlightenment, are part of the native Japanese religion of Shinto. One of the many interesting things about Shinto is that it has been very open to outside influence, or was, until the arrival of Christianity. Shinto includes a veneration of spirit and spirits, known as kami, and includes the practice of meditation. Meditation, enlightenment, and a life of harmony with others and nature are also elements of the many forms of Buddhism that came to Japan through China. The philosophy of Kong Fuzi, known in the West as Confucius, also came to Japan from China. The importance of family loyalty and obedience, as well as to one's superiors, also made its way into Japanese culture. Japan has a famous saying, Shinto is for weddings, Buddhism is for funerals, and Confucianism is for everyday life. What is not included is the idea of a single supreme being who sent a son in human form to earth to save it from sin and who preached universal love and peace. Oh, and who also rose from the dead and who looked nothing like them. The idea of sin was alien to the Japanese, but the ideas of the meek inheriting the earth and the last becoming first and the first becoming last, along with the idea of a perfect heaven, were really appealing to many Japanese, especially those on the bottom of the social ladder, and most Japanese were at the bottom. From movies like The Last Samurai and others, many people in America and Europe think of the samurai as honorable heroic warriors, and many were. They were also only about 7-10% to of the Japanese population, 
and ruled over the other 90% with an absolute iron fist. In 1601, just before the great persecution of Christians in Japan, the Tokugawa family ruled the country in the emperor's name. They brought order and stability to a country that had seen hundreds of years of war, and Japan began flourishing. But there was a cost. Obey or die. When the third Tokugawa shogun, Iemitsu, took over in 1623, he issued edicts that many historians believe made Japan almost totalitarian. Permits were needed for nearly everything. Checkpoints were everywhere. So were spies, informers, and samurai enforcers. For most samurai, life was pretty good. It was exceedingly hard for everyone else. But complaints were answered with the sword. Most crimes were capital crimes. Even before the arrival of Christianity, the Japanese used crucifixion as a means of execution. It's also true that a samurai could kill a commoner for any perceived disobedience, though this wasn't as common as it's made out to be in Western movies and TV shows. Not because killing was a sin, but because it brought a loss of harmony and might eventually cause peasant rebellions, which happened in Japan occasionally. Though many Japanese converts to Christianity were not samurai, a surprising number were. Some daimyo converted, attracted by the idea of life after death and the ideas of brotherhood in Christianity, which was similar to ideas within Confucianism. Many daimyo also liked Matthew 22, 15 to 22. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and unto God what is God's. Caesar being translated in Japanese to mean emperor and those in command. Initially, the Japanese did not see Christianity as a threat, but with every ship arriving in Japan came missionaries. Because the shogunate valued trade with the Europeans and their technologies, they permitted the Catholic Church to build churches, missions, and monasteries in the country, again, mainly but not only in the south. Unfortunately for the Christians of Japan, not all European missionaries were concerned with just spreading the gospel. Many were also concerned with increasing the church's political power, and that of the Portuguese and Spanish. By 1600, Europeans controlled most of Japan's trade with China. Today, it would be a multi-billion dollar industry. The Spanish and Portuguese also worked to convert and bribe daimyo into favorable trade deals and for political information and influence. In the historical novel and TV series Shogun, a British sailor tells the Shogun that the Pope had divided the undiscovered world between the Spanish and Portuguese in the Treaty of Tordesillas in 1494. The Pope is a representative of Christ on Earth. The discovery of this treaty by the Japanese may not have happened like this. However, Shogun is based on a true story, and we can safely say that the Japanese were not pleased with the treaty or the fact that the Europeans had kept it secret. In 1614, Christianity was made illegal under the second Tokugawa Shogun, Hidetada, and persecution began. However, it was relatively restrained compared to what came later, because until 1633, the Japanese still had to consider what the Europeans would think and do. On February 5th, 1597, even before the law outlawing Christianity, 26 Catholic priests and monks, both native Japanese and Europeans, were killed in Nagoya, were crucified publicly. Relations between the Europeans and Japan suffered, and the persecution eased for a time. In 1623, Iemitsu became shogun, and violence against Christians increased every year. In 1633, Iemitsu issued the Sakoku Edict, which effectively banned foreigners from Japan, except for selected small port areas around Hiroshima. This also meant that the Japanese could not travel outside their country. When the edict was issued, anyone outside Japan was not permitted to return without permission, on pain of death. 
Iemitsu and those close to him were determined to keep Japan pure. In the mid-1630s, persecution really began. In 1637, a rebellion by predominantly Christian peasants began against a daimyo in the Shimabara region, who taxed them into starvation. In reaction, the government cracked down hard. They started a sweep of the region, killing many Christians on the spot by beheading. Others were forced to renounce their faith, while being repeatedly dropped into boiling water, crucified, or threatened with the death of their children, most of which happened anyway. One of the most infamous methods of death was the herding of Christians towards cliffs overlooking the sea. All over the country, men, women, and children were pushed off the cliffs to their deaths, either on the rocks below or under the crashing waves. Babies were often tossed in afterward. Like in ancient Rome, Christians went into hiding. Some did renounce their faith. Some said they did and practiced the religion privately. But this was risky as informers, including their children, were everywhere. Historians in Europe and Japan estimate that about 300,000 Christians were killed in the last half of the 1630s. Christianity survived in Japan, but barely. Christians make up just over 1% of the Japanese population of 123 million today.